Hey, we're back. My name is Dr. Knot, and this is Sorcery Part 2. A game inspired by or created by or something by Steve Jackson. And today, well, last night we had the werewolf scare in this little field here. Today, we are, and we did this blacksmith thing. Today, we're going to either walk on, no. Going back to the first junction, no. Let's cut through the fields. Let's cut through the fields. Go this way. I do want to go see what's over by the river here, so we're going to head over to the right very shortly. You strike out across the fields, away from the path, heading towards the rising land and the river. Somewhere in the center of Kari are the docks, a busy place that will hopefully help you in your search for the city nobles. You crest the rise where the grass grows thin, then pause at a sound from behind you. It is the quiet shh of a dagger drawing from a sheath. Let's just go. You spin round, drawing your sword as you turn, to find yourself facing a thug, armed with a short dirk and cackling with glee. His smile drops a bit when he realizes he has been spotted, but he waves the blade at you nonetheless. Let's threaten him first, I don't feel like attacking yet. Drop that blade, you insist. I don't want to have to hurt you. The thug laughs, a little stupidly. Oh yes, he replies. That would make things easier for you, wouldn't it? it seems he has forgotten that he was about to attack you. This will be easy enough, you assure him. The thug gulps, then moves his arm. Did I just lose two stamina for no reason? A rock he was holding in his other hand strikes you on the side of the head. Oh, that's why. Making you see stars for a moment, but it is not enough to stop you. You launch forward with your sword. We're going with a big cut in the beginning here. I think we can take this guy out. The thug is perhaps crazy. He screams wildly as he hurtles forward. You raise your own sword for a brutal attack and knock him to the grass. The thug can barely find his balance. The thug shifts his grip on his dagger. Let's go. You keep up the pressure. You climb an outcrop and leap forward, lashing out with your sword as you land. His own half-hearted blow is knocked away. The thug is limping now and cursing with fear. The thug steps back. We only have a 2.2. Let's try it. There we go. Just get out of here with this. I think the thug was going all out every single time too, so. You batter at his blade, reaching down and you uh, reaching down you toss a handful of dust into his eyes and cut him as he staggers. Your strike is more than the thug can take. He strikes to the ground, quite dead. No stamina loss, flawless fighting. Except we lost two with that rock to the side of the head. With the thug dead, the field falls quiet once more. You quickly rifle the thug's body, apart from his dirk, a useless little blade. He's carrying only a couple of gold pieces, which you take, and a couple of what look like gambling chips. So we are out of food. We need to find something to do with food. We're going into the Festival of Thieves area here. So we need something to do with food, like an inn. I need to buy those. And we need to get our stamina back. So yeah, let's not do that. Let's let's do something like let's do. Does this do anything for me if I do something stupid like that? No. The path winds through fields, passing an orchard on one side. The trees are dying and bare of apples. On the other side, across muddy fields, you see the colors of flags of a festival. Colors and flags of a festival. Then the view is shrouded by tall fences on either side. Yeah, we're going to get ambushed. You pause to look at the fences. The fields they contain seem ordinary enough. But for some reason, the fences themselves are two or three times your height. There are no ladders to climb over that you can see, and no gates. A spell might be helpful here. Okay. What do I have for a spell? Something that will help us look over a fence? What do we got? T oh, nope. Okay, don't press the E up there. There you go. Reads minds, I don't have anyone's mind to read. How about H O W? Find safe passage. Alright. You cast the spell, and a calm voice enters your mind to tell you there is only one way forward from this place, and that is to move onwards. But is it safe? Let's just go on. There is nothing more to see here. Oh, that gets us really far. What does that even say? Oh, onwards. Okay.
You emerge onto a wide road that leads up a gentle slope towards a cliff edge. Looking back downhill, you see a few distant buildings, and beyond, the point where the three roads into Kari diverged. You turn to look up at the cliff, which rises suddenly out of the middle of the fields. Along its ridge is a line of finer buildings, though most have fallen into rack and ruin. Time to move on. So we could go back, so the thing is, turn left, turn right. The thing is with this, we have to find four those four um, noblemen or, or whatever. So although all we have to do is get to this point, the docks, we have to find the clues that we need along the way. So if we head back this way, we've missed all of these buildings. In fact, we've only been through here. I think we have to, let's, let's turn back this way. We're going to have to really look around this place, I think. You turn back towards the south wall of Kari, and follow the main road downhill through the fields. After a short while, you notice a smoking fire pit off to the left. A narrow track leads away to the right. This is the fire pit here, we can kind of see. You pause to look over the fence towards the fire pit. Whoever was there must have left only recently as smoke still rises. The smell of cooked meat lingers. On the other side of the road, the track winds through a meager field or through meager fields. In the distance, you can see the buildings of one of the city's ghettos, and presumably the path is for workers to come out to the farms. One building in particular looks quite grand and stands alone, right on the edge of the farmland. Which way will you go? Let's take a look at the fire pit. If we can find some food, that would be fantastic. You clamber over the fence and stride across the field towards the smoking remains of a fire. There is a wonderful smell of cooked pork on the air, and the ground is covered in scraps of meat. There is no one here and nothing on offer to buy. You take a moment to look around the base of the fire. From the churned mud and footprints, it's clear there were several people here until not too long ago. Suddenly, from behind you there is a snuffling sound. Something else has been attracted here by the smell. Uh, a wolfhound slinks out the darkness. You will have no choice but to fight. I'm going all out again. Let's just do this. Minus four. The wolfhound creeps towards you, jaws dripping and fur shining wet. It will not listen to reason. You charge headlong. It bounds forward, only to run itself onto your blade. It writhes and howls. As the wolfhound grows weaker, it snarls, yet madder. Howls and whimpers. Let's just do this again like this. Oh, it guarded. Okay, now we're going to have to guard on this next one because we don't have enough attack here. Because this one's going to attack now. Twist of your sword around. You twist your sword around for a wild blow. The wolfhound drops back. And yeah, we would not have had that much at all. So now we'll hit it, and it should die unless it defends. The wolfhound goes for your blood. You react on instinct, dodging around a haystack for cover. You are shaken, but unharmed. Oh, I defended again. Alright, we have to defend on this next one. You twist your grip about for a wild attack, but the wolfhound turns tail. The wolfhound is crawling now. It's fur thick with dried blood. The slavering beast charges for your neck. You fling your sword up and knock the beast back, and we should take it, take it out right here. You put all your strength into a swing of your sword, hoping to finish the creature in a stroke. The blade connects. As the wolfhound weakly opens its jaws to bite, you plunge your blade beneath its teeth and all the way down to its heart. It seems to be the way we do things with, with uh, wolfhounds. The wolfhound howls, a gurgling, blood-soaked sound, and then it dies. Two stamina lost, competent combat. With the beast gone, the field falls quiet, but in the mud, churned up by the beast, something is glinting. Of course we're going to investigate it. Digging into the mud, you unearth a curved shard of crystal. Curious. It can't be part of a jewel. It's about the size and shape of your cupped palm. It is also lethally sharp, so you leave it here. Head back to the main road. Why? What? No, huh? So we've got downhill. We can go back. I feel like we should walk through here. We need a place to sleep. We also need to talk to people. And I feel like this is just asking. For, there's nothing here. There's a nice manor, but we can let's walk down this this way. That's where we want to go. Let's go downhill. You continue down the road, heading back towards the wall just visible in the distance. A few buildings appear on the right-hand side of the road. It is quiet, with no one about. This part of the city port is barely habited, and certainly not somewhere the nobles would be found. 
but you may be able to learn some useful information from inhabitants all the same. You pass by a large structure with its doors wide open. The smell of incense floats out from within. You stop and peer inside, but make out nothing but darkness. It seems to be a wide, unlit space. A low sound of chanting floats out onto the street. A woman's voice. Let's go inside. You step into the gloomy shade of the building. The aroma of perfume and oil grows so thick that you begin to cough and choke, announcing your presence to whoever is inside. The singing voice falls silent. Who's there? You call out to the darkness. There is no reply, just a quiet sound, like a light footstep or the turning page of a book. Then there is a voice. Greetings, man of Analand. I see you are a bold type. Greetings, you answer. The voice laughs, a gentle, peeling sound like a chime. I see you are searching for something. I am after the North Gate spell, you reply. Is that so? That is forbidden knowledge, the voice laughs again. There is that noise again, like a palm slapping down. I see difficulty upon difficulty. Can you help? Another slap. It is the sound of a card being turned from a deck. Tell me, she says. Speak a word, and I will tell you what I see. Crown. I see a long road. I see a cloud of smoke. I see the rain that brings the morning. Gate. I see a closed door. I see a whispered secret. I see a trap of fire. Fire. I see an eye of burning red. I see a whispered secret. I see a small creature. A pet. Suddenly, from the far end of the room, a single candle flame ignites. The shade has been lifted from the lamp, revealing a woman in a deep hood, seated at a star-shaped table. She's staring at the cards laid out in front of her. You step forward, and she looks up sharply, eyes wide with fear. Stay back, she cries. You seek the crown of kings. You intend to conquer the old world. I seek to save it, you reply. Nothing will save it. The damage is done. It would be better if the crown were dropped into the sea. Remember this. Who are you, you ask, stepping forward once more. The woman looks up with deep eyes. A long scar runs across her face from mouth to left ear. I see things, she says, things that not all wish to hear. I wish to hear, she nods. You are wise. She turns another card, a movement that is almost involuntary. Involuntarily. I feel like it should be involuntary. Then she looks up at you. Remember this, the crown is not in Kari, but there are many who claim it is, and only one who is deceived. Only one truly believes. You thank her for her mysterious warning, but her attention is lost once more, taken by the cracks in the flagstoned floor on which she sits. The streets will burn, she murmurs. The wolves must be turned around. You leave her to her dark vision. You step back out onto the path to continue your journey. I really just want some food and some rest. That so much to ask. You stay on the main road, which heads down a slight slope to reach a small settlement of poor huts. As you pass these homes, ugly creatures gather to watch you in silence. A little further on, you come across a body lying face down in the gutter, a beggar, asleep, or some sort of creature in a drunken stupor. Yeah, we'll, we'll investigate. You approach the limp body cautiously. Nobody in the street seems to be taking any notice. You bend down closer and shake the shoulder of the body. There is no response. You grip the body's arm and turn it over. As its face swings round, you jump back, aghast. The body is a semi-decayed corpse with a rotting head that is half skull, half putrid flesh. And worse, an evil smile is spreading across its face. A moment later, it has sprung to its feet, leaping at you. Let's do it. You draw your sword and inflict a quick blow. The blade lands deeper than you expect, slicing the corpse right down the middle collapses into a bloody mess of arms, legs, and head. But a moment later, the body parts have lifted from the ground to surround you, clawing, biting, kicking, and shoving. Oh my. You are now battling a flying mess that has more stamina than, stamina than we do. Well, that was stupid of the flying mess. The head floats up to stare you in the eyes. 
while the leg aims a kick for your midriff. Or midriff. You raise your sword swiftly and carve the thing out of the air. I'm gonna go again. Damn it! That's bad. Then the living corpse is all over you. Mid swing, you are open. There is hair everywhere as the head gets close enough to try and bite out your eyes. It's just going nuts on us. You drop back, raising your sword to protect your body. The living corpse bites at you manically. Passersby on the street are stopping to watch in horror. Dirty fingernails rake your side. You are bleeding heavily and your enemy is still coming. Can we get this? Alright. Time to best this hideous monstrosity. You aim a blow for its head. The living corpse, mid-lunge, hovers away from your blade. This thing- oh man, we're in trouble. You circle away from the living corpse. It lunges, legs flying up either side to squash your skull. Its fingers curl and claw as they reach for you, but you hang back. We've got to do some serious damage here. Damn it! You settle up. Uh, you settle the rising bile in your stomach and ready your blade. You swing hard as the living corpse floats away across the street. The corpse wobbles in midair, arms crashing into legs. You have confused it. Can I like eat something? I don't have anything though. Oh yes, yes, yes. There. Fortunately, we can just go... We can step aside and drink a ton of juice. Okay, now we're fine. I'm not worried about it. Let's defend. You edge away across the cobbles, raising your sword. The living corpse leers forward, detached head barreling into your stomach. Now we should be able to do some serious damage. No, it defended. You prepare your sword. You chop with your sword as the living corpse gathers its parts around its head. Defend. You pace around the living corpse. It grasps at you with a terrible grin. Let's do... six. Oh, that is so lucky. You ready your strength. You chop at its legs. Then your blade lands into the creature's brain. The head falls to the floor and the other limbs go limp in an instant. Seven, stamina lost. Shameful. Oh, the body parts on the ground squirm and slowly ooze back together. Corpse now looks once again as though it had been run over with a chariot or in a chariot race, but it is definitely lying still, for now at least. Let's search this dreaded body. Expecting another immediate attack, you go over to search the body, but it is clothed in rags and has barely any pockets, let alone anything inside them. Are you looking? Oh, wait. Alright, let's keep looking. You open the corpse's mouth for with one finger and look inside. Nothing there. <laughs> But then you remember the corpse's strange guttural screams as though it was constantly choking. Disgusted, you push your fingers into the back of the corpse's throat. Something? Yes. With fingertips you draw out a fragment of paper. It is, hand it is a handwritten line, but it has been torn in half along the script and you cannot make out the words. You pocket the strange note. Perhaps later you will discover what it means. From a nearby doorway, a face appears and beckons you over. Yeah, let's check it out. You stride over to the hut. The face is that of a small gnome who begins to chatter in a high-pitched voice. You killed it! Did you kill it? I think you killed it! I killed it, you agreed. It's well, well, wonderful, the gnome says. We're just saved. It'll be a g -g good few months until it wakes up again. We'll c -c card it somewhere else. Here, we w -w wanted to thank you. He reaches behind him for something. You wait, and the gnome produces a small bag containing five gold pieces. I'm sure it's not, not, not much to a man like you, he apologizes, but it's from all of us. Peering through the window of the tiny hut, you make out twenty or so faces. It'll do, you reply curtly. Where can I find the... Uh, now maybe you can help me. Where can I find the nobles, you ask the gnome. Well, there's w -w 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 one of them right there, he answers, pointing into the street. The rest sh sh should be in the c c c council, but people say they've been all gone missing. He taps the side of his nose. They say the f f first noble's been in c c council for two months now on his own. Another question. Do you know any of the spells for the North Gate, you ask? The gnome bursts into laughter. Laughing so hard, in fact, that he begins to cry. Do I look like a knob? He asks. Do I? 
You look like your ear is near the ground, you reply. The gnome nods at that. True, true. But to know the lines you have go, go, go lower than that. Not all the nobles are even alive anymore. He scratches his nose meaningfully, although what he means is anyone's guess. Anyway, you could ask the p -p priest at the sh -sh shrine. He might be able to help. The gnome is starting to look awkward. What priest? The p -p priest, the gnome shrieks, alarmed by your sharp response. He waggles a nervous nose up to the up the road somewhere. N -n Near the d -d -d docks! The gnome's nose twitches. I'm g -g going now, he says quickly. Here's one more g -g gift. There is more kerfuffle. And then he brings out a small purple potion. Blimberry juice, he says. You're bound to get some sc -sc scrapes along the way. He presses the potion into your hand. You thank him and place the gift carefully into your pack. Continue downhill until you find yourself back at the place where the road splits. You found one new clue. Alright, so... I'm actually just gonna... Drink... That will wait, we'll keep it for later, but... A priest may know. The priest in Lower Akari might be able to help you find the spell lines to the gate. And then four nobles know the spell. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we, we actually knew that. Okay, so let's jump out of here, and I'll say thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. And yeah, we made one big circle in the city, and we're going to keep making more circles until we figure this out. So, thank you. I'll see you next time. I just said that, but whatever. I'm going to say it again. See you next time. Goodbye.